Yeah, welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Energy 808, The Cutting Edge. We have Henry Curtis from Life of the Land. And we're going to talk about uh, the lobbying efforts on behalf of Uho Nua, which is um, you know, the biomass uh, energy uh, project uh, by Jennifer Johnson um, in Hamakua, the Big Island. Welcome to the show, Henry. Thank you, Jay. Glad to be here. You know, for, for some uh, for some time, Paula Dobbin of uh, Civil Beat has been doing investigative reporting. Lots of news about it, but you know the the really significant thing since the last time we spoke, Henry, and you know, Life of the Land is involved in that case. Uh, is this uh, investigative report um, in Civil Beat by Paula Dobbin? It's it really it's a very interesting story. I'm sure you saw it. Did you see it? Yes, I, yes, I saw the story. Were you aware of those lobbying efforts, uh, you know, as a party to the case? We had some inclination about lobbying efforts, but as we poured through lobbying reports, as we asked information requests of who Honua, and as we sought information from different state and county agencies, we were stymied as to getting the information. And so Paula was able to get things that we wanted, but were never able to see. Yeah. How, how would you characterize, um, you know, the level of controversy and the level of effort in general uh, by Huhonua over the past couple of years? Seems to me from our discussions earlier that, that um, they, they were very aggressive. Am I right? Yes, they're very, very aggressive. Um, perhaps one of the most aggressive in the state. And certainly what we can see is just the tip of the iceberg. Some lobbyists will go into a committee and publicly testify, and others will file written reports, and others instead will simply sit in the back room with a legislator and discuss issues. And those are very hard to find because the records don't really exist. Uh -huh. Um, was very active, according to this article. Uh, they touched, I don't want to name all the names, but gee whiz, they touched so many people in the energy office, in the PUC. I guess it, it all um, it, it drove off uh, uh, this fellow, uh, Kevin Johnson, who um, is a basketball player, got to be mayor of Sacramento, uh, and came to town with an extraordinary agreement uh, between him and uh, Jenny Johnson, and, and he he stood to, he still does stand to gain an, an enormous payoff uh, if he succeeds in getting that project approved. But he would walk in on people at every level, um, quasi judicial officers, uh, uh, state administrators, high up, you know, people who reported to the governor. He spent time with the governor. He spent time with a number of powerful legislators. He conducted uh, fundraising events for them. Uh, he was everywhere. The, I mean, the, the, he got a hand it to him that he was so active uh, with regard to so many people in such high places over a long period of time. It, it sounded to me like a real mm, major effort at lobbying. What, what do you think? We knew that KJ was in the scene for the last uh, several years. Um, I had done some background research on him, so I, I knew he was connected to Hu Honua, but the level of lobbying, the numbers of different kinds of people he contacted with, the number of different agencies, the fact that he would approach the PUC commissioner, which is like absolute taboo, um, that level just is totally shocking. Yeah, the article reported that in response to that one, Approaching the uh, PUC commissioner, um, he he received a letter from the attorney general, quote, a polite, end quote, letter, uh, which uh, really, I don't know if polite would, was really appropriate because he walked in on her uh, and he tried to lobby her uh, to vote in favor of Hu Honua. That's pretty extraordinary. Try that on a circuit court judge. Try that on any judge and you'll see what happens to you. It won't be pretty. Commissioner is a quasi-judicial officer, and this case was still pending. It was a live docket. 
I mean, is there any question about the ethics over that? There is no question in my mind over the ethics, but I want to raise one additional point. When the attorney general wrote a letter to one party in a proceeding, it had an obligation to file that letter with all the other parties in the proceeding. So not only is KJ having a problem, but the attorney general was, I think, deficit in their approach to this issue. I don't know what it is uh, with the sports figures who get into politics and and they're famous. You know, they they win elections because they're famous, and people think that they you know that they they're terrific people because they're sports figures and they play basketball and all that. Um, but I I don't think that's the way the country ought to operate. He may now be successful in business. I understand he's opening restaurants and the like, um, but that still doesn't show that he knows anything about energy. I recall uh, $50,000 a month. And then he's got some kind of uh, contingent deal if he succeeds in changing the vote of the commissioner or the court. This opens a whole can of worms for me because we have this very controversial case. The stakes are very high. The number of parties, including parties like Life of the Land, a lot of parties involved. A lot of people are watching it. Um, Think Tech has covered it many times. and. So has the press in general. So has uh, Paula uh, Dobbin at the Civil Beat. But, but this puts a new light on it to elected officials, appointed officials, officials who, who hold the public trust are out there talking to a fellow who is obviously uh, trying to persuade them uh, in every way possible. Uh, <clears throat> this, this does not make you, you know, talk about confidence in, in the government. This does not make you feel confident about the government, does it? No. And the fact that the legislature was having an investigative committee looking at how to decrease lobbying and and how to fix the legislature to make it more open, while at the same time, a number of politicians were meeting secretly with Hu Honua, figuring out how to ram something through. Uh, that just shows that we're at the very tip of the iceberg, that we need a massive overhaul uh, and cleaning out of, of the way government is done. And sunshine would be the uh, solution to that, to require far more openness about what is going on. Yeah. I mean, there are those, including you and Life of the Land and me, that feel this project is wrong on a number of levels. Uh, it's wrong substantively in, you know, in terms of uh, the environment. It's wrong uh, substantively in terms of climate change. And it's uh, wrong procedurally. Uh, and uh, you know, if, if this project gets approved, it will be a statement on the dysfunction of Hawaii state government. I'm sorry to say, Kevin Johnson or not. You say to yourself, gee, are we, are we like that? Can we be had? And I'm concerned not only about Uhonua, what about any project which can be lobbied, you know, into conclusion, into approval, um, simply on the basis of big bucks? This is a, a concern that I'm sure you agree. I, I want to ask you if you do agree. Uh, this is of concern not only to Uhonua, uh, but to any project. It is absolutely of concern to us. And it really raises, I think, two issues. One, whether we let money control how we decide things, whether simply the person with the biggest bucks in their pocket gets to decide what we do. And second, how much of it is required to be reported? So for example, if you said to a corporation, if you do this kind of lobbying and you don't report it, it's a felony for the senior members of the management of the company. That would send a really strong shockwave towards corporations, not to the corporations that are doing the right thing. And many businesses are part of the right process, but it would take the stinking apples and say, if you get caught, you're going to be in serious trouble and your officers are going to risk jail time. And that may send a message that we need to be focused on the issues and not who can buy whom. You know, as a apparent vagary about exactly what lobbying is in the state. Um, I, I don't know all that much about it, but uh, I suspect that uh, 
that there are people who are saying, people, people on the Jennifer Johnson side of the equation uh, who are saying, oh, no, no, this wasn't lobbying. He's just a very friendly guy. Right. So, so the clearest signs of lobbying are either when you give money to a politician or when you talk about language for specific bills, like the, leg like the bill moving through the um, government this past session, the legislature, which called for requiring firm power energy. That was being pushed by who ho knew behind the scenes. What is the state of the law on uh, officials accepting the lobby? In, in my mind, we have fairly weak laws on really uh, disclosing um, all the information. Um, there are a number of loopholes that you could drive huge cement trucks through in, in getting out of things. I remember uh, decades ago, uh, going to a single fundraiser. We, we rarely ever attend a fundraiser, but we went to a fundraiser and I saw a lobbyist hand a politician a stack of an envelope full of checks, but each of the checks was like a dollar or two less than the limit that you would have to report it at. So it was a way of, and, and I didn't see the individual checks, but if you go back and look at the financial forms filed by the legislator and compare it to the fact that one person handed them the envelope. Uh, we, we have serious flaws in reporting requirements, and there are many ways of strengthening that. But unfortunately, the politicians who are in office do not want to see the system changed because many of some of them are very comfortable in the way things operate. OK, well, you know, it was very interesting that uh, within this year, you know, there were some indictments of sitting legislators who who took money in envelopes and all that. Um, and uh, what is interesting about that is that it, they were federal indict, indictments. Uh, and, you know, who's missing from this? Uh, where are the ethics organizations that's supposed to govern the legislature and state government? Uh, why is it necessary for the FBI to come over here from the mainland and investigate things that are happening under our noses? Why is it necessary for the United States attorney um, you know, to prosecute uh, when we have state agencies that could uh, themselves prosecute um, and do other kinds of investigations? But they seem to be missing from the stage. You know, do you have any feelings about that, Henry? Yes, I, I strongly believe that the state um, ethics commissions do not have the legal authority or the will to um, crack down. And there are ways of significantly strengthening it. One would be to put it into the state constitution, certain requirements that would both be on, on reporting and would also be on at least some level of um, public discussions about the legislative process. I mean, I can remember seeing hearing notices posted for the first time after a hearing was over. And, and you get all kinds of excuses about why it happened and everything, but that's not a seven day sunshine, that's a negative sunshine. We'll tell you about it after it's happened. Uh, right now we know what KJ did, but they were around a long time before KJ, and we don't know who the other people were who were lobbying for them and what they did. So I think the exposure by Civil Beat and Paula Dobbin is just sort of the tip of the iceberg. Mm, there may be much more that um, she doesn't know, and that certainly we don't know either. Um, I, you know, this doesn't it doesn't feel good in terms of uh, keeping the state honest. You get all these. Um, you know, comments by uh, officials uh, about how they're going to clean it up, but they don't. I mean, do you, have you followed? Uh, is there any news um, on those state legislators who were uh, indicted earlier this year? I, I haven't heard too much. Anything happen? No, um, I haven't heard much either. I think it's ironic, even though we need more of a two party or three party or five party state, it's ironic that two Democratic legislators were caught and the Democratic leadership turned a blind eye and 
the let and the voters had to vote in Republicans to replace the Democrats. It's 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 time for all parties really to face up to the fact that we need to clean house. And the way to clean house is really to pass meaningful disclosure laws with real penalties. Hmm. So in the case of Huho Nua, uh, what's the current status? And do you think, this is really an important question, do you think what Paula Dobbin reported had any effect on the ultimate decision-making in that case? The consumer advocate, the PUC, Tahiri, and Lifeland filed um, our answering briefs on December 14th. And Huho Nua will then respond to them on the 28th of this month. Um, I don't think Paula Dobin's article may have much impact on the outcome of this case as it's going to the Supreme Court for the fourth time. Um, but I think it will greatly impact um, legislators who are uh, becoming increasingly aware of the uh, brazen um, activities of Hu Honua. Affect them how? Affect them in favor of the lobbying effort or against it? I think they're going to move away from supporting Hu Honua. I think Hu Honua has demonstrated over and over again that when you don't have the facts on your side and you don't have the laws on your side, what you really need to use your money to see how much you can buy. And um, as long as that's hidden, um, it may be okay from everybody's perspective. But once the as Paula Dobin releases this information, um, people will be nervous to side with Huho Nua. Yeah, it's out in the open now, isn't it? And but good. Uh, that was a, a really important article, not only in the context of Huho Nua, but in the context of investigative reporting in our state. Uh, we need that kind of article. We need that kind of re reporting. Uh, kudos to her and Civil Beat for that. Um, you know, one of the things she wrote about, Henry, um, is the, the problem with the permits. Uh, Warren Lee is the chief executive, I think, of Uhonua in the Big Island. He, he has an, a, you know, a history in energy and a history as the, as the chief of the Department of Public Works. So he knows the people in the Department of Public Works. And Paula reported on uh, what she called, quote, a mess, end quote, with regard to the permits over there for this very same project. Well, on the one hand, we have been searching for and trying to get the records on all the outstanding permits that Huo Nua has uh, for both the County of Hawaii and the Department of Health and maybe others. I think her article really highlighted how how at fault Hu Honua is in getting a num numerous permits to construct buildings, to inspect them, to occupy them. And they had simply, as they say, gotten verbal assurances from somebody or other who no longer works at the department. Um, but this is a real mess. It's something we've been trying to get at a long time. And it's something I think the Public Utilities Commission is actually moving forward correctly. They are now requiring all, uh, all um, applications before them to basically lay out all the permits they need from different agencies. And there's a docket open at the PUC where you can look at projects, figure out what permits they need, and figure out how people and entities can make comments on those documents. So I think the PUC is moving in the right direction, and Huho Nua will highlight the fact that they need to move even further um, to avoid something like Hu Honua from happening again. Is it so serious, this, this lack of uh, permitting, lack of maintenance on permit, permitting? Um, is, could this be fatal to the project? Uh, what, you know, do, from what we know now, how much, how much is necessary to correct um, the problem, the mess in the permits, and is it correctable? What I don't know is how many of the permits are simply ministerial that the county will sign off on. How many of them can be questioned on different ways? Um, we have been seeking this information for a long time, and Hu Honu has been hiding it from us, refusing to answer questions. Um, so I don't know. Uh, well, one thing I do know is they said 
the project could come online in 2019 if only the PUC had approved it. And with the fact that they didn't have injection wells, they had problems with other DOH permits, and they have all these outstanding county permits, obviously that was an error on their part. And we need, we need truth. Businesses that tell the truth should have an advantage over companies that intentionally lie and hide stuff. Well, you know, that, that raises an interesting question. I mean, your life of the land has opposed many projects on the basis of larger issues, environmental issues primarily, I guess, and cultural issues and um, climate change issues. Um, and so some of these um, failures are technical failures. Um, and they don't really go, correct me if you disagree, they don't really go to the heart of the matter. And yet they're, they're useful uh, in terms of opposing the project. How do you look at that, Henry? I mean, if it's a technical violation, are you gonna, are you gonna raise it uh, in order to uh, you know, use it as a way to stop the project? Or is there a line that you don't cross there? Uh, as an activist, as an environmentalist, we can say, ah, I'm not going to play this. Um, this card, you know, can wait for some other time. I, I care more about the substantive issues about the project, um, burning biomass and, and smoke and uh, contaminating the atmosphere. That's what I care about, rather than technical issues. What, what's your approach, your philosophy about that, Henry? Um, absolutely. There is a line. We don't cross a line where we can't put in meaningful input or where we can't influence the outcome or it's a trivial matter. We seek to focus on substantive major issues. The majority of renewable energy projects proposed in this state we have never objected to. A few of them we do object to. Some of them we seek to strengthen and to modify a few like who Honua just need to put be buried. Yeah. So hard question, last question. You know, reading that article and seeing the other article uh, about about the permitting, um, there are many lessons in those articles. Lessons the public, you know, should know. Um, and indeed, you know, my suggestion to the public is they should. Uh, highly hence and read those articles um, because they're important not only uh, for this particular project, they're important for state process, um, state uh, truth seeking, if you will, state ethics um, at the same time or other projects. Uh, who knows how many projects? Um, and so I ask you what we have learned from Hu Honua, what we as a state have learned. Or put it this way, what should we have learned as a state from observing this from your vantage and from the vantage of those two articles? I would say what we should learn from this is that as Hu Honua has demonstrated, there are many ways of bypassing or hiding from Hawaii's ethics laws. And therefore, the laws need to be strengthened and the penalties need to be strengthened so that if Hu Honua had done this after the modifications to the law were in place, they would have been caught instead of having to wait for an investigative reporter to really delve into the issues. Thank God for the media, no? Yes. It's a, it's a great thing to have uh, people in the media speak up on these issues. And uh, I hope that it, um, it, uh, it, it, it falls uh, on good listeners in the legislature, uh, in the ethical organizations that are supposed to govern this, and including the uh, committees, the auditors, and the attorney general. We should be sharp as a tack on this sort of thing, not only because we want to avoid corruption, but because we want to have people in the state care about state government and care yes. and, and believe in it and be confident in it, in our democracy. Well, thank you, Henry. Is there anything else you'd like to tell our listeners before we go? Just thank you for all your um, investigations and all your all the great work that you have done. Mahalo. Mahalo to you, Henry, for your work. Henry Curtis, Life of the Land. Aloha.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.